it's the 13th night of Halloween. With the That Gets My Coat chats, Rich Outfield and Big Ang Rich. <laughs> Hey, this is Bank Bank Ankivit. Let me try that again. No, I like that. <laughs> Bank sounds more like a name. I'll... Hey, everybody, this is Big Ankivit, and this is Rich Outfield, and this is the Thirteen Nights of Halloween. Wow, that Marathon. was really spooky. On the stop it. That gets my goat. Scaring me of the Dune Steef. Stop it. Law. No, you're scaring me. And the stop. Uber feed. Oh. If you're subscribed to that. <laughs> If you if you are subscribed to the Uber feed, then you got to hear us coming up with a title for this story. <laughs> if you're subscribed to the Uber feed, then it's 2015 as well. <laughs> oh, the Uber feed does yet does not exist. No, it's a long ways from existing. Uh, when I started posting my posting, when I started posting my uh, Rich Outcast, you had me add it to the Uber yeah, feed. Yeah, yeah. So I I'm, assumed that that existed. I'm somewhere. trying to make it. You know, as we go, I'm making sure we put it on there, but there's still a long ways from where I started it back to square zero that I have to put on before it's complete. Oh, you can't just say as of July 1st, the Uber feed is c- complete. No, I'm trying to make it it's an actual, actual Uber complete. feed. Yeah. Hence the name Uber. All right. I think we were coming back after the story, which was last time. Unless this is all the same episode, then all of this is cut. And I just said there were a couple of Shatnerian line deliveries. All right. So let's talk about the story. What inspired this tale? An, an actual balloon that lurked. Yeah, this 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 tale is, I mean, it's not really autobiographical, although it kind of is. My daughters are named Aspen and Kinsley. Oh, uh, <laughs> folks. <laughs> If you could have seen the way he spells Aspen and Kinsley. Okay, without looking, spell Kinsley the way that the story does. I think it was K-Y-N-Z-L-E-E. Is that it? That's how it's spelled. That's (laughs) awful, man. Now, you told me that you actually know of someone who named their kid Kinsley spelled this way. No, I don't know of anyone who's done that. Oh, Buddha. I uh, oh. uh, just me. I'm the only one whose name. No, no it's <laughs> ghastly. I, I'm why just do messing. people do that? I don't know. Okay, they... now and spell Aspen. In fact, I want you to spell Aspen the way it appeared once in the story. Oh, with the third N. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's A S P Y N N is how I spelt it in this yeah. story. Yeah, I actually went. Uh, one time I saw a movie on YouTube about really ugly, uglily spelled names. And uh, yeah, I was using that as my inspiration. I just wanted my names of my children in this particular story to be really millennial sounding. I think what had happened, oh, it was this. I had watched an episode of that TV show, The New Girl. You heard of that one? And there was these millennials that moved in like downstairs from the the people that are the main characters of the story and like they came up and they're like hey yeah what's up we just moved in downstairs my name's Chaz this is and they went through the names of all the people (laughs) and they were all just these ridiculous names like Chaz which is that short for something or like short for Charles okay but so yeah it was like Chaz and Brony or something. I mean, they were just the wackiest name. I mean, Brony probably wasn't it, but... Oh, dude, I guarantee you, in the last couple of years, there have been lots of kids named Brony. Named Brony. But yeah, they're, they're a bunch of na- just weird... Just names that I despise, just in general. And I was thinking, oh yeah, so I'm going to make my kids in this... I actually, to tell you the truth, really enjoy coming up with names like these for characters. It's one of those things that you can do for fun can give your characters goofy names i've got some new goofy names like that that i've got planned for the next story that i'm gonna i'm gonna write i think i'm gonna name the main character who is a man Taysom. oh dude don't do these things these, these are <laughs> awful wait, wait, i still haven't gotten over a story we ran on the dune steve probably two years ago <laughs> longer three years ago his name was feeling oh, yeah <laughs> 
I guess I was weak in those days to accept a story with a kid named Feeling as the main character. Feeling. But it, it, that kind of thing, I, I don't know about more. you, but if, I will always try and come up with like names that I can get my heart around, which is stupid <laughs> to say out loud, but in my head that sounded cool. But like, <laughs> t- if it's a pretty girl, I give her a pretty name. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or if it's like a cool idyllic son... I was like, what would I name my son? That kind of, you know, I, was, I have a list of Taysom. potential. Yeah, Taysom is just, <laughs> I see that name and I was just like, oh no. The neighbors down the block named their kid Taysom. What are we going to do? <laughs> I did that in one story. What, gosh, this must have been one of the first stories that I wrote. Uh, you, you probably remember. It was, it was our first broken mirror story where the guy, <laughs> he's about to have his child and he's insisting that the child be named like Joseph or something Gus I don't know something tough I can't remember what it was and his wife wanted to name the kid uh, Brendan and he's like oh not I hate Brendan and then of course they have the baby and the baby's named Brendan yeah and he's called he starts calling him Brendy and stuff Uh, (laughs) see Brendy sounds like a really pretty girl with braces but you know that she's gonna have a wonderful smile when she gets the braces Mm mm-hmm when they, she trades the glasses in for uh, contacts and finally does her hair instead of leaving in that big frizz. I don't know. I guess I was trying to say Brendy sounds like a girl's name. We got way off track, but it's your own fault for doing this with the names. <laughs> and yes, unless you see the story in print, you'd just be like, oh, that's a normal family. There's nothing effed up except the <laughs> balloon. Okay, so uh, sort of autobiographically. Okay, saying. yeah, going back to that, there was this balloon. I was actually inspired by this balloon that I felt like it lurked. Now, was it a Valentine's Day balloon from this year? Yes, yes. The, the, the three balloons are exactly as we bought them from the, I think we got them at the dollar store. And yeah, it was these three balloons and they are all little animals holding the hearts that said, be mine. Two of them quickly were popped or lost. I don't remember what happened to them. I think one of them actually was popped by my older son, and then he offered to give the younger one his balloon to say he was sorry or whatever. But yeah, then that balloon would just, it, it got old enough to where, yeah, it wasn't, it didn't float to the ceiling like they do normally. It was just kind of just enough so that it hovered. It didn't go up, it didn't go down, it just kind of stayed there. And I would hear it like the air conditioning would come on and it would like be behind me or something rubbing against the wall and it's like what the ah, and it would just be there kind of around and i'm just like man that is so creepy how it would do that and so it gave me the idea to do a story about a possessed balloon was it ever peeking over the counter toward you yeah the coming home from work and and it was yeah it was low and now it was later on where it was a little bit lower and yeah i swear it looked like it was looking over the counter at me it was so creepy yeah so i tried to make a I was like, dude, I should write a story about this balloon. And the, I mean, we still had the balloon, I think, the day that I wrote the story. Because I saw that balloon and I thought, man, that is creepy. And then I thought, that would make a good story. And that was a day that I had to take my car in to get fixed. This was back when I had my car, like, it hadn't been registered for, like, five months. Because there was a couple of little things that needed to be done to it before it would pass the inspection. And so I went into the car shop to get it fixed so that I could finally get it registered. I don't know nothing about birth and no baby. Uh, uh, and so, yeah, I took my tablet with its little keyboard that it has on it, and I took it with me to the car shop, and I sat there in the car shop, and I just typed. It was tough because there's that... The BBC... BBC... The BBC show... There's some BBC show that's about cars that's on, like, the... I don't remember what it was, but it was a really entertaining show, unfortunately. And it was on the TV there. Top Gear, I believe it's called. Yeah, I think that is it. And I was, I I kept getting distracted by it and I was watching this show and they had this just, this insane like car that they'd made. They made it up to be like perfect for old English ladies or something like that. So I had like giant buttons on the radio and there was like one station you could choose from (laughs) that just played the theme song to match a, a horse of the day or some i don't know something and then they had they once they had it all set up they took the old lady a bunch of older ladies out in it and drove around town and they're like clapping along with the horse of the day song and you know they had all sorts of stuff like you park your car 
and then you go back to get in and you can't remember what car park you parked it in and so it's got this and they push the button and it like shoots a flare <laughs> so they could find it it was just also this really interesting stuff and i was trying really hard to write while this was playing right in front of me eventually that show ended and another show came on and i just got up and turned the volume down on the tv and other people came and they were just sitting there watching this silent tv show and they didn't i guess they didn't have the audacity to turn the volume back up but yeah i just i finally turned it down so that i could type further and um yeah i typed that one i think i typed the entire story in the time that i was there although i may have had to come back and do a little bit more this was actually right at the time we were doing the magic spreadsheet too mm. it was one of my couple of days where i was writing a for the magic spread it didn't take very long because it's a pretty short story how short is it i would say two thousand words oh okay. i kind don't know like a triple word score story. yeah i don't know exactly but it's right around that so yeah i thought it would be perfect for this show because it's supposed to be scary and uh it's short so you know th that gives my goat stories i think need to be short that makes sense uh you and i have something in common in that we've both slept with your wife. No, in that both of our stories uh, are a, are scary stories about something that's not considered scary. And I wonder, well, you obviously had an actual experience behind your story, but uh, was it at all difficult to make a balloon threatening? I, I tried. I think if you just give it the right language and the right feeling behind the words, you know, it, it can be, but... In the end, the balloon has to be a real threat. You know what I mean? It has to be something. It has to be able to do something. Um, well, how did you come up with what it would do? I don't know, I guess Is, I, was that something you agonized over? Or the second you saw the string, you were just like, well, that string could. You know, I'm not sure how I came up with it. But yeah, I probably was just thinking, what can a balloon do? I mean, it can float. And, you know, if it's still got air in it, it can't do a whole... I mean, maybe you could smother someone's face with a balloon if it was just but it would have to be pretty to flat or yeah i mean you could anybody could tie the string around their neck and manage to choke themselves with it somehow i mean they, there's all sorts of kids that died using the little strings that you pull the blinds up and down with so it's the same kind of thing as that i guess that's why you don't find those strings anymore that they used to have when you and i were younger where they went in the loop. Yeah. You know, they've unlooped them. That was the first step, was making them separate. And now I don't think you can even get blinds that have those kind of a strings on them anymore. Huh, that hadn't occurred to me. You, you don't know what you got till it's gone. That's right. Okay, well, there you go. Now, see, I think that there was dread. I mean, I, I didn't know. I had never read the story before today. And so I didn't know what was coming. Uh, and that's why I asked you, how do I do the first sentence? What's the tone of the story? But once you said, he's looking back on something scary that happened, that actually happened, it was easy to maintain the tone. Uh, despite the occasional William Shatner delivery, it was easy, though, I think, to maintain dread in this. And a, a good writer can make anything scary. I mean, that's my hope for mine as well. Is and, and that's something we've talked about a lot of times. Um, Stephen King, back in you know his experimental days, would try and come up with a haunted car or a ha haunted, a um, haunted lawn gnome, it, well, fish tank. I mean, there were <laughs> there were three or four in a row where it was stuff like that. Yeah, it was it was something ordinary, An something evil not instantly. Knickknack shop. Yeah, that kind of thing. A haunted rabid dog. A haunted fan of book writers. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's enough. But he'd come up with a haunted <laughs> hotel. Or he'd come up with a, a haunted car, like I said. Or, or, And I don't know if he was just trying to see if, we could, if he could make something like that scary. But uh, he wrote a story called Chattery Teeth that was about a set of those wind-up chattery <laughs> teeth that's possessed. And... It's one of his best stories. It's the, the man was really talented in coming up with a way that you would be afraid of that. And yeah, if you think about a part of you that's vulnerable, 
What would you not want those teeth to do? And so, yeah, the, 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 the easy part is you have it going after your kid. And that's something that everybody can relate to. If it goes after a grown man, that's one thing. But if it goes after a defenseless child, you know, that's something else. And it did go a little bit after him. You know, sometimes it would lurk or it would be right there behind him. It would be there to spook him. And then, of course, in the end, when he tried to save the child, it tried to push him away and get rid of him. But why did it go after the girl? Because she loved it, right? She There's no it. reason that it would have want to hurt her. Yeah, she was the one that was that was with it. And it was just a bad spirit. It wasn't like it protected its own or anything like that. It was there only for mischief. And so that's why it went after her, because she was the one that had it. And I think probably the last... It's funny, because it's been six or eight months since I wrote this story, so I don't really remember necessarily what I was thinking, what I was going for when the balloon went away for a couple of days or a week or however long it was that he says that, you know, it, it disappeared and he forgot all about it. I don't know if it went away so that they would forget about it, or if it was just hiding out in the closet or something like that, waiting for the perfect chance now to strangle. It was ready to go. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what I was going for with it. I assume it was probably in her closet, hiding away, biding its time. Because, yeah, she would be the one that, that latched onto it, that would let it stay. Where I'm sure the rest of them would be like, eh, stop lurking, balloon. Why are you going to lurk like that? I don't know. <laughs> And they'd get rid of it eventually or pop it or... What became of the inspiration for this story? <sighs> it probably got flat enough to the point where we finally just had to get rid of it. I don't know. I don't remember to tell you the truth. Okay. Unfortunately. I was hoping that there was a punchline yeah. there where you're just like, uh, the day I finished writing this story, it popped. Or <laughs> but, uh, it, it tried to strangle the cat and I let it. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't remember what happened to it. Unfortunately, no good story to it. I'm sorry. The, all the good story was put into what I made up and wrote in there. <laughs> no, that's cool though. I like finding inspiration in real life instead of just making up a story out of whole cloth, saying, "Oh, you know, remember that time that this happened? What if it had happened just slightly differently? What if we had zigged instead of zagged?" I love writing those kind of stories. Yeah. Um, so in the end, you think that this has some spookiness to it? Oh, I think so. I mean, it also, because it's an audio, we can do stuff with music. And I, do you think that maybe you will make a sound for the balloon? Yeah, I'll try to come up with something. I'm not sure what I can do for it. It's one of those sounds that's kind of specific. Maybe I can record my own sound. It's usually hard to find a really specific sound that somebody else has already done for you. But you never know. There's that freesound.org that has so many sounds available. But sometimes it's hard to find what you're actually after because you got to search the right word and stuff like that. It can be a, quite a treasure hunt. But it, it seems like you could get something and just run it over the windsock. So it. I don't know if you can hear a sound, but... That, Maybe I'll just use that right there. And you could make it have a personality. If you see what Ben Burt did with all the sounds in the Star Wars, or Gary Rydstrom, Rydstrom does with the sounds and all that thing, you can give personality to sound effects, to things that shouldn't have personality. Remember R-O-8-O-T before we shot him? He used to have <laughs> some personality. <laughs> Anyway, as always, we invite people to donate to the show. That's what these daily sh episodes are about. But also, you're free to uh, comment what you thought of the story, what you think of balloons. Um, that's in the forums, I'm assuming? Yes, in the forums you can go and comment. And I, I would be really interested to find out whether you felt, you know, any hairs sticking up on the back of your neck or any... any of that kind of feeling of fear or whatever from this story because yeah i mean it's scary balloon are you kidding me so i don't know let me ask one more question about the real balloon it actually had a bear face on it mm -hmm. what was the bear face like it was, it was super innocent or it was, there was yeah, something it was slightly... pretty standard cartoony 
normal old bear kind of face. It, it didn't look scary, didn't have fangs or teeth or any, you know, wasn't a mean bear in any way. The whole, it was just the way the balloon acted that made it creepy and gave me that inspiration. And, and you know, obviously it wasn't really acting. It just had it gotten to the right the right amount of flatness. <laughs> I don't know. It had lost the right amount of helium to float in the right way. And then, you know, it was all just the air conditioning playing with that thing and making it do weird stuff that uh, you would just be like, oh, what is that thing doing? It's right there behind me. But yeah, I mean, it would do stuff where like you would be there and you'd like whack it. And then you'd be like working on the computer or something. And then all of a sudden it's back. Like, what the crap? whack it again kind of you know it was oh man it really was freaky it's weird how little things like that can be you can find and we talk about stephen king finding a way for things to be scary if you've got enough imagination if you're one of those kind of people which i know you are yeah you can freak yourself out with whatever it is it's just like oh what is, ah, that thing is well i think anybody even if they don't have an imagination seeing something move in the corner of their eye when they know they're alone has to startle somebody. Even if it's just the air conditioning turns on and the curtains start to move. I don't know. I think that's cool. I, I, I yeah. don't remember you telling me about the balloon when it happened. Oh, yeah. Maybe I kept it a secret so that when you read the story, you'd be so scared. Or it would be something new to you, at least. A lot of times I tell you all my stories before I ever write them, if I ever write them. So when I give you a story, you always already know where it's going and stuff like that. Sometimes I try to keep it to myself just so that there'll be some element of a surprise in a story when I finally do share it with you. It's funny here in the new house, there's uh, we've got these blinds, that a blind, I guess it actually is called, that you pull down and it covers like the back door has a big window in it. And so you pull it down and it covers that. It's just one solid piece. It's one solid piece and it just hangs there. It doesn't hook on to anything. And yeah, when the, when the air conditioner kicks on here, it'll start clinking really softly against the little clink, 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 clink. And you're, the first time that that happened, I'm like, what is that sound? What in the heck is going on? And I had to get up and go find out what the heck it was. So yeah, all those kind of little things like that can be quite scary if... You just have an active enough imagination. And on that note, we will leave you for another night yep. of Halloween. Yep. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, hey, thanks for writing a story and sharing it with people. No problem. That's what I'm here for, man. That's what I do. It's my new thing. Well, it's a very new thing. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. But uh, I'm going to see if I can make it happen. Okay. And with that, we shall leave you with this thought. Don't name your kids effed up things. <laughs> Good night. See ya. That Gets My Goat is produced under Cabrera Cardman's Average Use and Non-Commercial No Deliveries 3.0 License. But that will be our little secret. <laughs>